I think the three of us feel this and probably a lot of our audience is like when you do start to nourish yourself with the right foods and you get sunlight in the morning and you sleep properly, you really are able to tap into that inner guru in a different way and really yeah. listen to that voice. And I think even if you are not metabolically healthy, I think you can still feel it. But the confidence to actually like act in alignment with that inner guru, I don't think you'll have that confidence. Like you might recognize it, but you might not have the courage to act on it, which is where I was. And it feels so good just to be able to like actually listen and do the unsafe thing and just yeah. go in alignment with that. Do you want to belong or do you want to be authentic? And to choose yeah. authenticity takes radical, <clears throat> deep, life-altering courage. Mm -hmm. And that's what it comes down to. Do you have courage to be a little bit different? Do you have courage to speak different ideas out into the world? And that requires being made up of the good things, mm. which, yes, it it does come back to diet. I do think... I do think you can overcome a bad diet with healthy mindset. However, it's so much easier if you are made up of the good things. Your cells are constantly recharging with what you eat. So it's almost like a fast track to a better life is yes. eating very well. Yeah. I was legitimately just about to ask that question. I was interested to get both of your guys' take. Like This idea of freedom, how much of it actually comes from the choices we make around diet and lifestyle to some Point, but really like just nutrition freedom to overcome your cravings freedom to overcome emotional eating and it comes back to the science of true nourishment and when we think of nourishment we think of dietitian like, like we think of mm. diet and like how you're going to properly nourish yourself with macros and carbs and protein and veggies etc fermented food Nourishment is so much more than that. It is spiritual nourishment. It is connecting to a higher power as you understand it. It is being engaged in tasks that make you feel really alive. It's having a supportive community. So it's meaning and relationship and gratitude going mm. out of your way to have positive emotions and positive experiences. The way that I like to think about nourishment, because the truth is people eat because they're spiritually starved. People overeat because we are undernourished. We don't know what makes us joyful. We don't know what makes us happy. And this is this is properly engineered. We like living in a society where you are constantly seeking outwards instead of turning inwards. Because when you turn inwards, when you have this strong inner guru connection, you are powerful. You are dangerous. Dangerous. You're going to make different decisions. You're going to act on your own belief systems, mm. and that's threatening to the larger the larger world, the larger culture that we operate in. The science of nourishment, for anybody who's listening, thinking, oh my God, Aaron, I'm so disconnected. I don't remember the last time I was happy. And this is a lot of people. I don't remember the last time I was properly stimulated. Mm -hmm. So many people are understimulated. So what I like to say is use the past to inform the present. So think about a moment in the past where you were deeply fulfilled, where you maybe forgot to eat because you were so immersed in activity, where you were laughing without thinking, is there food in my teeth? Where you were joyful and fully present in that moment. What were you doing? Were you with a specific person? Were you hiking out in nature? Were you eating an amazing meal? Were you painting? Were you creative? Were you reading? What was the thing that you were doing? And then implement, implement that immediately into your present. And so that's like the roadmap to living a more nourished life. And then you're not going to overeat. It really, it becomes this cycle because you're not trying to fill yourself up because you're already full. Mm. Yeah, it reminds me of like, so Harry and I, we recently got our uh, our office a couple months ago. And so Harry's been getting the backyard like really dialed in to just be able to host a couple, some really nice events out there. So there've been like two dinners in particular where Harry's working the grill. He's doing, he's grilling 60 plus steaks. I'm seasoning all the steaks. You know, you're getting people seltzers. You're making sure all the guests are happy and stuff uh. like that. And we, we've said too, we almost love the feeling of like, we like the night will go by and we won't even eat. Like everyone else will eat, but it's so fun just being present and just make like catering to make sure everyone else is having an amazing experience too. That's Cause so you're fun. just so locked in and you're so present. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds incredible. And it's an in it's an interesting dichotomy to what you're saying too, because I do feel like when you're starting at zero, at least for me, when I was trying to heal from UC, having like, I don't want to say rigid, but just like a set of guidelines of like, I'm going to eat single ingredient, real foods, 
God foods. I'm going to cook my meals. I'm going to do these things repeatedly for you know months at end. It feels really good to stay in those guidelines. But then I also see people that almost take that like to a degree of almost neuroticism where it's like, oh my God, if I eat seed oils once, I'm going to die. Or if I drink tap water, I'm going to die. Where I I actually love being on a really good path, but then going on vacation or having a pizza or having something that's not technically within that framework, but enjoying those foods with people that I love and care about and then getting some sunlight afterwards. And I feel amazing afterwards too. It's like a dichotomy, right? Huge point. Absolutely. For example, we want to take Eden swimming. Mm. Chlorine is detrimental to our health, but I want to enjoy the moment. I want to go swimming. So we're going to do it anyways. And Mm. this is also freedom. So what I like to think is you take the practices seriously, but you don't take yourself so seriously. So you take the diet seriously, but you don't take yourself so seriously if you're going to enjoy a moment. For example, I had a uh, book launch event at Book People a couple weeks ago. And somebody asked me if five minutes of meditating is enough as a way to almost integrate the practice. And I was so close to saying, yeah, if you're a beginner, yeah, five minutes of meditation, go for it. But that's, I really had to stop myself because if you want to have this everlasting, deep, profound connection to yourself and a higher power as you understand it to guide you, if you want to have these spiritual epiphanies, if you want to be connected to your inner guru, Don't be afraid to double your devotion. Mm. Show up for the full 10, 18 minutes. Like really give yourself time to dive into it. So it is, it is that balance of live your life, but honor what you know feels best for you and Mm. take time to dive deep into something to reap the benefits. There's seasons Mm. for Mm. everything. It's such a good point. Um, You know, Brett and I run a men's group on Tuesday and we talk a lot about just spiritual practices, prayer time, getting into scripture. And the question is always around like, how do you pray? And it's like, do I just like pray for a minute? Like, what are the guidelines here? And the real answer is like exactly what you just said. It's like the devotional is up to you. Like you are spending the time, however much you want to get out of it is going to be how much you put into it. If you want to really like find that peace, find that like really centeredness and connection with God, like you're going to need to sit there and pray for longer um, Mm. or read more scripture. Like it's kind of the answer. Um, And, you know, meditation is similar where finding that silent place, it's, you know, you need to do it for longer. Mm. 